Hello, welcome to Code for Teachers. This is Chapter 4, Section 3, Filter Functions. This is probably going to be the longest video we've done so far, so settle in. This is a lot of interesting information, but it's going to take a little bit of time. The first thing we want to talk about is the filter pattern of functions, where we take an iterable, a list, a string, and we return an iterable only composed of elements that match a given criterion. This is a huge piece of the work of computer science. We do this all the time. I can't tell you the number of filter functions that I write on a weekly, monthly basis for different applications. There are a lot of ways to write filters in Python, and the one that we're going to be exploring today is the most basic. It is not at all the best way to do this. We will get there eventually, but this is the best way to learn the pattern. So. This is the iterative filter pattern, which through its name you should guess means that there's going to be some kind of loop involved. So it goes like this. We start with an empty result, an empty string, an empty list, an empty tuple even. Whatever it is, it's empty. Now, we have an iterable coming in as well. That's the thing that we're trying to filter. So we're going to loop through each element of that provided iterable. And as we examine each element, if it satisfies our tests, our conditions, then we're going to add it to the result and return at the end of this loop the now full result. Let's see this in action with a filter that we're going to build right now, the even odd filter. Now, you think about what we're going to do here. We're going to write a couple of functions, one of which definitely has to check for evenness and oddness. This is a great opportunity for separation of concerns. Right? Is even is a function that checks a single value for evenness. Now, already you should be thinking about data types coming in and coming out of functions. So is even is going to take an integer and return a Boolean value, either true or false. We should know that going in so that we know how to write with this function in mind. We're going to write an even filter. Now this is going to take a list of integers and return another list of integers, but only with even values. And of course we're going to write an odd filter that does the same thing, but only returns a list of odd values. Let's jump in and write these three functions. Okay, here we are with three completely empty functions. Is even. Now my favorite part of this function is how simple it is. All we need to do is return whether n modulus 2 is equal to 0. That right there gives us is even. So remember that mod, the modulus, is the will return the remainder of integer division. So if it's a clean divide by 2, that's an even number. Otherwise, it'll return false. And remember that this double equals sign here means a comparison. This whole statement evaluates to either true or false. right? Either it is true that n mod 2 is equal to 0, or it is false that n mod 2 is equal to 0. And just to prove it works, uh, let's try it right now. Is even 21, and we'll try it with 20. OK, so our is even function is working just fine. Now, even filter. Let's think about that pattern. We have an iterable coming in, and we need to start with an empty result iterable. So we'll call that res equals, and then it's an empty list. So then we're going to say for n in nums, if something, if what? We only want things that are even. So if is even n equals true res dot append that n. Now, right now, let's make sure that we understand this, that because is even returns a Boolean value, we can actually shortcut this and just say if is even. We don't need that comparator there, because otherwise it'll say, it's just basically saying if true or if false. So res dot append n, and then we just return res, no else necessary. Okay, now 
for the odd filter, it's essentially identical. So we're going to cook a little copy pasta here, which I'm hoping some bells are going off for you that, we, that we're copying and pasting whole chunks of code. That shouldn't be a good feeling. We're going to do it for now, but I'm hoping that that raised some eyebrows. Okay. So we also need that res list. There we go. Now, of course, as it stands, I've just written the even filter twice. I need to have the opposite. And the way that we negate something in Python is putting the not in front of it. So if not is even, that means that so if it's equal to uh, false. OK. So let's also add into memory a bunch of numbers. And let's say, let's do it the fast way. Let's do list and range and say 1, 2, 101. So that's all the numbers from 1 to 100, all the integers from 1 to 100. OK, so I have this loaded into memory. My program is running. So if I ask for odd filter of nums, let's see what happens. Great. So what's gone on here is nums has gotten loaded in, and I'm getting only the odd numbers back. Let's try even filter. Everything's looking good. Now we can go further with this. We can begin to explore a little bit of function composition if we bring in some old code here. We can mix in mult and div, and we can even create some functions called mult all and div all that are given lists and return a list where each element gets multiplied or divided by the given term. We started to play with this a little bit in our mult and div video, but here we're going to formalize it a little bit. And we can even then filter those results through our even and odd filters. Let's give that a shot. I know that's a lot, but you'll see what we're able to do as we go through it. OK, so I've now loaded in a bunch of our old code. But I'm going to fold all this code that we don't really need to see anymore. We know about multi div, and we know about is even and even filter and odd filter. So if you see these arrows over on the side, in Replit, I can actually click those and collapse the contents of these functions. Yet another great feature of functions. Okay. Okay, so we just have to worry about mult all and div all. And you see that mult all takes two arguments nums, which will be a list of integers, and y, which will be the number to multiply all those integers by. And similarly, div all takes uh, nums and divisor, which will be the number to divide all those numbers by. OK, so we're going to basically repeat this same pattern. We're going to say uh, res equals, and then the empty list, and then for n in nums, res.append. What are we appending? Well, we're appending mult, and then n and, and y, right? n times y. And of course, we return res. OK, let's try just that much. Let's load up a nums in here just so we have that available to us. List, let's say, uh, 1 to 20. I think that's good enough for this. Let me fire this up. And let's say mult all nums. And let's multiply everything by 5. OK, looks like that's working. We get a list starting with 1 times 5, 2 times 5, 3 times 5. Looks good. All right, let's do the same thing for div. So again, we'll begin with our empty list. We'll say for n in nums, res.append, div, n, divisor, return res. Again. I'm hoping that all of this repetition between these two functions is, is kind of freaking you out. It's like, maybe there's another way to do this. And that's a good instinct. But for the moment, let's just make sure that we can get this working. OK, so div all, 
uh, with nums. And let's divide everything by, let's say, 5. Looks good. And remember that we're getting tuples back as our result, right? So 1 divided by 5 is going on correctly here. And as we move forward, everything looks pretty solid. So these functions, as implemented, are working. Okay, what we haven't done yet is filter those results through our even odd filters, but we could. So let's try that. Now over here in the shell, I've got this even filter. Uh, so what I want to do is I'm going to say even filter. And I'm going to give it the result of mult all of nums. So this is function composition right here. Even filter. What kind of a thing does even filter take? Say uh, mult all by nine. So even filter takes a list of integers, which is exactly what mult all will return. Not so much div all, we'd have to do a little bit more housekeeping to work with that. Not impossible, but not also, you know, uh, not out of the way. So, mult all is going to return a list of integers, each number in nums multiplied by 9, and we're passing the result of that inside of the even filter parentheses. So, let's see this happen. So indeed, we get back only the even products of multiplying by 9. Let's try odd. So you can see how, as we compose functions, our ability to write programs is pretty powerful and also pretty clean. Let's talk about those red flags that I was hoping were going up for you as we were writing some of this copy pasta. There are a lot of DRY, don't repeat yourself, opportunities inside this code. Isn't it interesting that multall and divall are basically the same, except for the function that's getting applied to the list, either mult or div? And it's the same thing, really, that even filter and odd filter are basically the same, except for the word not inside of the odd filter. That's enough similarity that we should think about a way to write the function, both these twin functions as single functions. And we can do that in both cases with extra arguments to one function. One thing that we're going to look at is something called default arguments. And default arguments are arguments that you can kind of pregame inside your function definition. They can be overridden later when you call the function, but allow us to provide a default value if one isn't provided. It also is true that functions are a data type. What that means is that we can actually pass functions two other functions if we name them. That sounds a little bit crazy, so let's give it a shot. Okay, so I'm going to again collapse this mult and div, and this is even. Now, instead of having an even filter and an odd filter, I have this function called even odd filter. And what's interesting here is that I've got nums, of course, I'm taking a list of ints, but I also have this second argument. This is what we call a, a default argument. So it's called filter evens, and we're pre-gaming it to the value true. I can override this when I call the function, but if it defaults to true, I can still use that value, even if it's not included. OK, so let's think about what we're going to do here. Same basic idea, res equals we're going to start with a loop for n in nums. If is even n is equal to filter evens, then we append to the result. We return res. OK, so let's think about this for just a second. So. By default, filter evens is true. What that means is that we're going to want to filter evens. Now, if we're use, let's say we're using two as the number here. Is even given two will be true 
which is equivalent to our value for filter evens. So that's what we want, so we're going to append it. But let's say it's three. Is even three returns false, but filter even says that we want evens, and so we won't append it. Uh, alternatively, alternatively, if we override this and change it to false, then we'll get exactly what we want. Let's uh, add that nums down at the bottom here so we can use it inside the shell easily. Let's range, let's say 1 through 20 again, and let's run this. So let's say even odd filter, and let's give it nums, and let's say we'll leave it alone. This should only give us the even numbers 1 through 20. Indeed it does. Now, let's try it again, but instead we pass false as the second argument. Hey, now we're getting odd numbers. So with that default argument, we were able to break down two separate but nearly identical functions into a single function, and we're not repeating ourselves. That's exactly what we want. Now let's think about the mult and div situation here. Uh, we're basically just applying a mathematical function to uh, two numbers in each case. So really all we need to do is write a way to apply a specific function, which we're calling fn, that's a, it's a common abbreviation of function, to a list of numbers uh, with a term to operate by. So pretty much all we need to do is say 4n in nums. Oh, I forgot my res list. For n in nums, res.append fn, which is what we're calling whichever function we're passing here, n, and then y. And return res. Okay, let's take a moment to think about what we're doing here. Three pieces of information are coming into the apply function function. Uh, the actual mathematical function, either mult or div, that we want to apply to each number, the list of numbers we're going to do that to, and y, which is the term that we're going to multiply or divide by. Okay, so let's see how this works in practice. So we're going to call apply function, and we're going to give it the named function mult, because that's already defined in our program. When we hit run here, all of these functions were loaded into memory, including the mult and div. So I have mult available as a named function. So I apply function mult, we're going to apply it to nums, and let's say multiply by 7 this time. So what I should get back is a list of numbers multiplied by 7. And indeed I do. Now let's call exactly the same function, apply function, but with div instead and I get back the tuples that I would expect from trying to divide all the numbers 1 through 20 by 7. This is a really powerful application of function composition. Now that we know that we can pass functions to other functions, the possibilities are really interesting. This covers most of what we need to talk about regarding functions for the moment. So we're going to leave this chapter here and not include a lesson plan, just so you can play with functions a little bit on your own. But in the next chapter, we're going to start from the beginning with full lesson plans that we build out throughout the chapter, rather than these mini lesson plans that we've been doing so far. Now that we've gotten through functions, we've gotten most of the building blocks that we need for all of the programs that you're going to want to run. So. Get ready for the next chapter. It's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you're enjoying this so far. Uh, don't forget that you can read other writings on this at theforeverstudent.com. You can hit me up on Twitter or on GitHub. I'm Michael Tankert. Thank you for watching Code for Teachers.